come back. All right, welcome back to another speed surfing tutorial. In the last one we focused on how to break 30 knots and we talked about the basic technique and the gear you will need to break 30 knots. In this one we're going to go a bit more into depth into the tuning of the sail and what board and sail you will need to break 35 knots. And trust me, speed surfing gets so much fun once you get beyond 35 knots. It is so addictive, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first aspect we will need to focus on is the spot and conditions you will need for 35 knots. And it's pretty simple, you will need more wind compared to reaching 30 knots and you will need flatter water. So look for the flattest spot that you have in your region and you will need a day with at least 20 knots, I would say, to break 35 knots. It's better to have 25 to 30 knots probably. And if you do not have a spot that is relatively flat and windy, well, it just gets that much harder to break 35 knots, but it will be more of an achievement if you do it. So. Yeah, look for the flattest spot and look for the most wind you can find. Basically, that's the key to speed surfing, being at the right spot at the right time. Now let's get into the things that are more in your control, which is the gear and the preparation. The most important part about speed sailing is to always try to improve your stance and your technique while speed surfing. Remember that the legs, not the arms, translate the power of the rig onto the board and onto the fin. It is really important to have a lot of leg strength while speed surfing, not so important really to have a lot of arm strength. As for the technique as stated in previous videos, keep your upper body straight, your front leg straight and your back leg slightly bent on the speed stance. The more body tension you can generate, the more stable the whole system, the rig and the board becomes. And you want it to be as stable as possible to have a steady force that is propelling you forward. The more body tension you can generate, the more stable the whole system, the rig and the sail becomes and the less you will get bounced around by waves and chop and gusts and you want to have a steady force that is propelling you forward. You can really see this really nicely by watching professional windsurfers, professional slalom windsurfers in particular, sailing because when you watch them, their rig and their board, they don't move around a whole lot and you can really see how their body tension is keeping the sail locked and the board locked so that it's not moving around a lot and that they have a steady force that is propelling them forwards. So the body tension in my opinion is really really important while speed surfing as well. A couple things to keep in mind. Do not oversheat the sail. If you oversheat the sail it will kill the flow around your sail and you will basically kind of stall. So what I like to do in order to avoid this as much as possible is to put the harness lines in a position so that I have 60% of the force on my front hand and 40% of my force on my back hand. If I had it 50-50 I would have more of a chance to pull the back hand and by doing that killing the flow around the sail and oversheating. So by having it 60-40 the sail opens kind of a little bit more and I never oversheat the sail. So this for me at least works very well while speed surfing. And yeah another tip do not overload the back leg. If you put too much pressure on the back leg you will push too much on the fin and you will increase the drag of the fin slowing you down and in the worst case if you push too much you will have a spin out and you do not want that. So the back leg should always be slightly bent and most of the pressure should be generated over your front leg which should be very locked and straight and this is what's generating the lift onto the board is the pressure of the front leg so you want to have most of your body tension translated through the front leg onto the board. to increase my core strength and my body tension is a combination of weightlifting and a little bit of yoga and I think it's really important to work off the water on your body strength and on your body tension to have the best possible circumstances when you go out and actually windsurf that you have the best possible preparation and can generate as much body tension as possible to help you gain some speed and some knots. Let's get into the fun stuff, the gear and more importantly the trim and tuning of the gear. So. The smaller the gear, the less drag the sail, the fin and the board will create. So that's why generally speaking, the smaller gear has less drag and therefore is faster. To reach 35 knots on a windsurfer, a small slalom board 
or a big speedboard, depending on the conditions, are ideal. So the big speedboard is generally faster than a small slalom board, but oftentimes they are built a little bit differently. So while the big speedboard is created for flat water conditions, so not a lot of chop, a small slalom board can even handle some small chop very well. So I would advise to look at your spot and see what your conditions are like. So if you have a spot that has like small but very steep chop, a small slalom board might even be better than a big speedboard to reach 35 knots as it will like glide a little bit smoother through the chop while the speedboard is really getting stalled by the chop but that depends on the speedboard a lot. And on the other hand if you have a spot that has like perfect laboratory conditions and perfect flat water a, s a big speedboard is better for reaching 35 knots I would say as you can get that little bit of extra speed out of the smaller speedboard compared to the slalom board. So yeah the shape of the board really determines its characteristics and what, the board, what sort of uh, conditions the board is ideal in. So let's briefly talk about some of the characteristics of the shape and what they will do on the water. And yeah, guys, I'm really no expert on this, so I will just briefly explain and I hope I don't get anything wrong. So let's get into it. So first of all, the V in the bottom of the tail determines a lot how the board rides. If you have a big V, the board will be a little bit more controllable. And if the board is perfectly flat in the tail, it will be faster, but harder to control. So let's say in choppy conditions, maybe you want a little bit of V in your tail, while on a perfect flat water course like La Palme or somewhere in the tidal creeks, you want maybe a perfectly flat bottom shape. And the next thing is the rocker. Like if you have a speed board that you use in perfect flat water, you do not need a lot of rocker. You really want the board to be like more flat, so it will has, have less drag and there are no waves around, so you don't need a lot of rocker. And the next thing is the rails. So usually on speedboards the rails are pretty sharp so the water will flow better off the edge of the board if the rail is like really sharp. Then another thing that really determines uh, how the board rides and chop is if you have a deep double concave in the front of the board or if you don't have it. So if you have a deep double concave the board is really smooth in the chop. So if you have a really choppy spot you want your board to have a lot of double concave in the front of the board while if you do not have so much chop you don't need such a deep double concave and also the volume distribution in the board is really important so what I like is boards that have a lot of volume in the tail of the board as I think this gives me the opportunity to create a lot of lift out of the boards because I can push on the tail really nicely and have a good stance and I don't really know how to explain it but it's just the feeling I have if I compare some boards that have a lot of volume in the tail and some boards that don't have so much volume in the tail that the board that has more volume in the tail will generate lift much more easily. Maybe some of you guys can explain in the comments why that is, I'm not really so sure. So I have like basically two boards that are kind of designed for like the same wind range but for somewhat opposite conditions. So I have this board over here which is the 52 Modena Speed and I have the 62 wide board, the 98 liter slalom board and yeah, I kind of use both of these boards in, in wind ranges of 20 to 30, 35 knots. So this board, the 52 speed Modena, I like to use when I have like flat water conditions. Then the board will generate a lot of speed and I use it like in a wind range of 20 to 30, 35, up maybe sometimes up to 40 knots. And the 62 slalom board I also like to use in those wind conditions. But if, you have, if I have a little bit of steeper chop and maybe more gusty conditions, I will go for the 62 Modena. And I can get 35 knots on both of these boards very easily, but it depends really on the conditions what board I like to choose. So like these are just some things for you to keep in mind when choosing which board you want to break the 35 knots to keep in the back of your mind. Okay, so let's talk about sails. So why do we even need cambered sails? The reason is that the pressure point on cambered sails just stay in the same place so they are a lot more controllable so it will be a lot easier for you to transmit the power of the sail onto the board if you have the pressure point always in the same place more or less. So yeah that's why we really need cambered sails and also the slalom sails they have a big open leech on the top so a big loose leech so the sails have a lot better release on the top of the sail which you want while speed surfing. And talking about that release, I think it's really important. Most people I see, they don't put enough downhaul onto their sail. So the sail doesn't open up enough and the pressure is not being released really well by the sail. So I think a good rule of thumb would be 
to put more downhole than you think basically when you want to go speed surfing. Especially compared to slalom, I think you need a little bit more downhaul. So probably most of the time if you put one, one centimeter more than what you think you need, you're on the safe side. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, I pulled the sail a lot on the downhaul and probably one centimeter more than for slalom windsurfing because I really like the sail to open in the top and release the pressure so that I have a nice easy feeling while sailing the sail on a speed run. Yeah, also I really like to pull this strap for the lower leech of the sail quite a lot and what this does is it creates a little bit deeper profile in the bottom of the sail right here and the sail kind of closes more here so that's really what you want on a speed sail so you will have a little bit more power so if you're struggling with the conditions you might not want to pull this strap too hard but if you feel that you have enough control and maybe need even more power from the sail really try to pull that strap which a lot of people don't do okay yeah the last thing about the sails is the outhaul so on these sails which are the 0.7 ac speed they already have a they already have a quite deep profile so here i really don't need to let loose a lot on the outhaul maybe sometimes i even pull a little bit if i sail on a square course but this depending on which sail you have from which manufacturer you might want to really open the outhaul or if it's a really really deep sail you might even pull it a little bit but this really comes down to preference and depends a lot on the manufacturer as the sails vary a lot in how deep the profile is. Alright guys, that's it for this episode of the speed surfing tutorial series. I hope you found some useful information in this video and what I think is the key takeaway from this is uh, when you want to become better at speed surfing, don't be lazy. That's what I did a lot of times, like you rig and you tune your gear on the beach and it doesn't really work and you just keep sailing and that's really the mistake. You really need to find your trim and your tune and that's a lot of work sometimes you need to come back to the beach change a setting by a few millimeters go back out change it again and only by doing that you will find the sweet spot on your gear and yeah so that's like the key takeaway also for me because sometimes i'm also lazy don't be lazy i hope the tips in this video were helpful for you if so maybe leave a like on the video also for the nice sunglasses and i will see you in the next episode where we will discuss some more advanced tips on how to reach 40 knots until then, see you guys.